Hi, this is Eric Schlappi from Schlappi Engineering. And today we're going to be discussing generative patching. The first patch we're going to show is the Krell Music Patch. And the modules that I have chosen to demonstrate it are the body, a standard analog core, um, triangle core oscillator, angle grinder, in this case being used as a wave shaper and a bandpass filter, function, a single cycling envelope, maths, two cycling envelopes, the wired woggle bug being um, clocked from the maths end of cycle output with a stepped output, a random output, a smooth random output, a stepped random output, a smooth random output, and a woggle VC output. The weld for VCA duties. And the DLD for delay. The Krell, I'm not gonna go too deep in the history, but the Krell music is in reference to Fantastic Planet. Its soundtrack being famously one of the first electronic music soundtrack pieces. You should definitely listen to it. This patch is in reference to Todd Barton, who's a master synthesis and um, posted online a patch trying to emulate the music of the Krell with his bukla. This patch has since morphed and <laughs> been emulated by many, many people, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to try to do it. Here's a diagram of Todd Barton's patch. It involves two smooth random generators, a stepped random generator, three envelopes, an oscillator, a wave shaper, an LFO, a VCA, and a bandpass filter. Um, Having so many randoms is maybe peculiar, and so many envelopes is maybe peculiar to his particular bukla. But the real meat of the patch, what makes it so generative and cool, involves the interaction of the three envelopes and the three random sources. Also that it uh, creates both random pitch, timbre, and note length. Here's a diagram of my patch. I'm subbing out the Buchla randoms for a woggle bug, using the angle grinder for a wave shaper bandpass filter, and using maths and a function for all of my envelopes. Okay, let's break down the patch a little bit. 
So I've got my three envelopes here. This envelope, sort of our main envelope. As it cycles, its end of cycle is going into the clock input on the woggle bug. And the stepped out from that, which changes on those clock edges, is changing our note on our oscillator. The envelope out is going into our VCA, providing a clear correlation between the volume of a note and the note itself. The output of the oscillator is going into the wave shaper input or grind input on the angle grinder. The wave shaper amount is being controlled by the smooth random of the woggle bug, and you can see that indicated by this LED here. That's being normaled into the filter input on the angle grinder, currently set in a bandpass mode with a moderate amount of uh, resonance. It, because of the peculiarities of the angle grinder, the wave shaper input, the wave shaping amount, also acts as an additional feedback path. These two other cycling envelopes are both um, modulating that main envelope in some way. This one is modulating the rise of the envelope, and this one is modulating the fall. The fall of the envelope that's modulating the rise is getting the woggle CV output from the woggle bug, and the envelope that's um, modulating the fall is actually having its rise being modulated by the output of that envelope, creating a feedback loop. In effect, there are several feedback loops happening here. Um, between the random source and the envelopes, creating an endlessly evolving sequence, uh, which as you've heard underneath the whole video so far, just keeps going to different places. Next generative patch I wanna show is something inspired by Rob Hordyke's Benjamin. So I'm using two of these basic triangle core VCOs, Angle Grinder is a bandpass filter. This OMI Industries dual digital shift register patched up as a single eight step shift register instead of two four steps. To do that, I use the fourth step of one patched into the data input of the second with same clock going to both. Also this DPW comparator, a VCA delay, a uh, cycling envelope. So the Benjolin is a creation of Rob Hordyke as a DIY sibling to his Blipu box. It's a super patch of sorts meant as a standalone instrument. Here is a block diagram I made of it involving two oscillators, a filter, a shift register, and some tricky feedback paths, as well as an exclusive OR and a comparator. Uh, Rob Hordyke's terminology includes the Rungler, which is his shift register with feedback. There are other uses of shift register with feedback in the modular realm. Uh, Buchla had one with the source of insurgency, his random generator. Music Things Touring Machine uses one in a pretty innovative way. Um, the Wired Noise Ring is another, I think perhaps based on the source of insurgency, though I could be wrong. Uh, Industrial Music Electronics has another strange take on it with the Zorlin Canon. There's plenty of others as well. In computer science and electrical engineering, the linear feedback shift register is a well-known pseudo-random number generator. A shift register, if you are not familiar with it, is a digital device that takes in clock and data. At each clock pulse, whatever high or low is at the data input 
is moved down the line. It only understands high and low. But you can combine the bits to create analog voltages. If you take three bits, you get eight values. So there's eight possible voltage steps that can come out by mixing those together and using it as a CV feeding into the oscillators and also the filter. Additional randomness is created by exclusive oring bit eight with the triangle wave of oscillator two, which we keep in a lower frequency than oscillator one. For my patch, I added an envelope and a VCA so that we could have dynamic amplitude. I was missing an exclusive OR, so it's not quite as random as it could be, but we do have variable threshold to adjust on our PWM, which is adjusting our sequence. So this oscillator runs at a lower frequency and sets the clock rate. But because of the shift register feedback, that clock rate will change. This oscillator is what we're hearing is our tone. We're getting some pulse width modulation by comparing their levels together with this comparator. We can shape our timbre with this bandpass filter. by pushing it into audio rates. We can take it someplace really noisy. Changing the comparator thresholds will change both our tone and our sequence. There are pretty much infinite options as much as far as generative patching goes. Some po popular strategies include uh, software like Max MSP or Pure Data. You can get really intentional about the system you're building that way. Complex digital modules like Ornament and Crime. Feedback patching, that's some of my favorite. Just patch everything to everything else. You'll probably get something weird. Uh, Nonlinear Circuits is a company that sort of specializes in this sort of thing, and they have um, they have lots of options. Things like squid neurons as circuits and many chaos circuits. Uh, Ian Fritz is another great uh, inspiration for chaos circuits. And if you're trying to build your own, I would recommend taking inspiration from organic systems and neural networks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Remember to modulate the modulation. Thanks again.